So the social justice team uh, recently had met to talk about the hunger and homeless plate collection. And Reverend Robin had told us, sort of in passing to be honest, and I'm par paraphrasing here, she said the conventional wisdom kind of holds that people become homeless because of some catastrophic event in their life. But she said, actually that sort of denies or defies the fact that most people become uh, sort of face housing insecurity due to the role of inherited wealth. Uh, and to me, that really struck me, uh, of course, because she had said it and I, and I sort of trust her wisdom, but apart from that, uh, a local Lyft, it was the second time I had heard that, a local Lyft driver had told me the same thing. Um, and so a couple of months ago, I was coming home from Beacon uh, on a lift, and we went down uh, Hobart Avenue. And so the Lyft driver tells me, uh, he's sort of looking at the homes, and he says, uh, you, know, the, you know, he's looking at him, and he sort of is, is fascinated by him, and he says something like, yeah, these, these homes must cost a fortune. Uh, and I re to be honest, I really wasn't paying a lot of attention, and I said, yeah, uh, you know, these folks must be like Wall Street execs and make a ton of money. Uh, and he says, yeah, you know, that's one way to look at it. Another is that these people have inherited this wealth, and it was made and built on the backs of other people. Uh, to be honest, I sort of looked up intrigued. I was looking at my phone, really not paying attention, and I'm intrigued. And to be honest, I was even surprised. I wasn't expecting my Lyft driver, uh, a young black man, uh, to, be, to have such a deep structural analysis of housing segregation. So I replied to him. I said, you know, I told him this story. I said, hey, I, you know, I have a friend who recently moved to Summit. And he was able to move here and buy a home because he inherited wealth uh, from an aunt on his, on his wife's side that had passed. Uh, and he says to me, uh, look at that. We don't have aunts giving us money, leaving us money to buy a home. And think about it, he says. This was an aunt. This wasn't a mother or a father leaving to their children. Imagine what they left to their children. So I want to ask you the inverse, right? Imagine uh, what it is to inherit a life that straddles on the edge of homelessness. To imagine what it is to inherit uh, a life where you're facing financial difficulty or food insecurity. Imagine that you're inheriting uh, state violence or redlining. So I think it's absolutely crit critical that we have a structural understanding of wealth inequality, of generational wealth and violence, all these different ways that contribute to housing insecurity and food insecurity. But giving today is not about making systemic changes. I think it's about having that understanding, but necessarily not making those changes today. Giving today is about recognizing the violence that is inflicted on a person when they lose their home. This is about standing with another soul who faces, uh, who needs food and shelter here and now, at this moment. It's about giving, an, giving to an individual or a family uh, in one of the, who are in need, of course, uh, in one of the, or the wealthiest nation in the world, in one of the most affluent, or one of the most affluent counties in the state. So to me or for us, uh, this is a form of harm reduction. So please give whatever, whatever you can. Thank you, Eric. Um, by process of elimination, I must be Claudia Cohen, and I am. Um, as is noted in the order of service, the plate collection will be donated to four organizations. Each organization has a strong history of serving members of our larger community who experience food insecurity. Many recipients are also homeless. These organizations are, and these will be familiar to many of you, Helping Hands and Ears of East Orange, SHIP, Summit Helping Its People, Bridges Outreach, and the First Unitarian Society of Plainfield Food Pantry. For those who are newer to our community, Beacon has a long history of contributing time and or treasure to these groups and witnessing their positive impact up close. 
Eric noted the importance of addressing structural inequality and of providing direct service to those in need. I'd like to let you know that Beacon's social justice team is committed to both kinds of action in our three areas of focus, racial justice, refugee response, and green earth ministry. And recently we have committed to addressing gun violence as well. We're committed to combating structural inequality through such means as raising awareness, joining citizen campaigns, um, supporting legislation, and more. I also want to let you know that during this fall, during the same time, the social justice team provided financial support directly to serve victims of recent natural disasters. And boy, have there been a mind-numbing series of natural disasters. Know that the social justice team in your name contributed to address the devastation wrought by hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria in Texas, Florida, and Puerto Rico, respectively. These are places in need that are admittedly far from Summit and Central Jersey. Today's plate is an opportunity to provide support much closer to home. You may see these chronic victims of poverty as I have in the train station late at night, or sadly, you may walk by them without knowing it. Please give generously. It may not seem like a lot to you, but it could make a significant difference to someone. Thank you.